make, taking a step forward, taking a step forward towards my goal, my dream. Maximizing your ability, that's why I came here. It was just always a dream just to come in and a business to come here to win. Alabama's always been a big part of my life. Anybody's dream to go up Alabama fan, be from Alabama, and then go play at the University of Alabama. I'm telling you, this place is rocking right now. Welcome everybody to another edition of the Nick Saban Show presented by TruckWorks. I'm Chris Stewart along with the head coach of the Crimson Tide. Coach, congratulations. A phenomenal 34-20 win over the Tennessee Vols. Yeah, and I guess what's phenomenal about it is the way it happened. Sure. You know, to get behind 20 to 7 in the first half and, you know, then, you know, sort of dominate the second half 27 nothing, really speaks volumes, you know, for our players, their competitive spirit, uh, how they fought back in the game. And, um, you know, I can't say much for how we played in the first half, but, man, I got a lot of respect for guys that compete that way and can come overcome adversity and, have the perseverance to keep sustaining uh, even when things aren't going well. And what an atmosphere. You know, our, our fans were fantastic. Uh, I went over and tried to thank them. I uh, wish I could thank every one of them personally. They, they had a huge impact on the game and completely changed the momentum of the game when we hit the long touchdown pass right at the beginning of the second half. And then the energy was just completely different the rest of the game for our players. Uh, in the stadium and how uh, our fans affected our team. Your team grew up in a big way today, didn't they, Coach? Well, you know, we took care of business. Uh, we dug a hole for ourselves, but we took care of business. But, you know, in this league, I know we got a bye week and psychologically we need to chill out, but we got more business to take care of. Sure, I understand. All right, let's take a look at the first half highlights. On the slam. Single set back to the left side of the quarterback. Play action fake, he'll look left, he throws long, he's got coverage, but there's a man open. Touchdown, squad from this distance this year. Just off the far hash mark, the kick going to your right as you listen, and it is up, and it is good. Matthew Solansky is the snapper. Ross the holder, kick is up. And the kick is good. So a 26-yard field goal. Third down conversions today. Here's the snap. No roll. Looks, fires, end zone. Touchdown, Jermaine Burton. That was a bullet, a 10-yard bullet. And my goodness, did Alabama ever need that? Yeah, they did. That was huge there, especially on third and seven when we struggled so much on third and long situations. But the trips really forced the secondary for Tennessee to win motion. Milton gets the snap, drops back, floats it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. It was McCallum Castles, the tight end, who was in motion. And he got position. Coach, it looked late in the first half like you were about to flip things back around after a tough start, but unfortunately it kind of ended the way a good bit of the half had gone. Well, I think, you know, it was a huge change t turn of events right before the half. Um, you know, we were in the red zone, had a chance to score through an interception. Um, they go down, all the way down the field and score on what was about the last play of the half uh, on a third down. Um, so, you know, now we're behind 20 to 7. It could have been 13 to 10, but... You know, they had like 275 total yards, 100 yards rushing in the first half. We didn't play very well defensively. Um, we were inconsistent on offense, and we couldn't get off the field on third down. It was a big problem on defense. We created enough third downs to get some drive stops. We couldn't get off the field on third down. There were like three or four straight third downs that they kept moving the ball on us. But we did a good job in the red zone because they had the ball in the red zone twice, and we held them to field goals to hold it you know, to, to 13 to 7, but then to score right before the half. But, you know, I've been on the other end of that when some big momentum thing like that happens right before the half. And for whatever reasons, your team goes flat on you. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what I said, you know, in the locker room later because I know you're going to ask me, but wasn't a great first half for us. 
But that second half was indeed better, as we'll see in a few moments here on the Nick Saban Show, presented by TruckWorks. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Coach, last week you told us that the message at the half must not have been very good because it didn't start off very well. You got really good at it in a week's time. I don't know if I get good at it. You never know how they're going to take it. But um, you know, I, when I walked in the locker room, I usually don't say anything until we go out for the second half. But you know, this time around, I just said, "Hey, I want everybody to listen up." You know, everybody here has got a choice. You got a choice to make. You know, that's not the kind of football team we are. That's not the kind of football players you are. And everybody's got to ch t test their energy level and their intensity to go out there and play the kind of football in the second half that we're capable of playing. And if we do that, we can win this game. And Oof. they certainly responded well to it. They did indeed, Coach. There were a lot of them, as we'll see here in the second. You don't have a block to make plays. I see Jaden Roberts is back out there now. Tyler? It's good to see that that injury was short-lived. Yeah. All right, let's see what the Tide can do now. Trailing here, 20 to 7 to begin the second half. Milrow on the give. Jace McClellan, he's down the near sideline. He takes off scampering, and he's out across the 40 to the left side of the quarterback. Here's the snap. Milrow stands in, loads up long, looking, got him. Touchdown! Touchdown! Isaiah Bond, 46 yards. Touchdown! Boy, J.C. Latham there on the right end of that offensive line did an outstanding job against Tyler Barron, one of the leading sack producers for Tennessee. He had his hands full but held up and provided enough time for the post from Isaiah Bond to develop. And Jalen Milrow delivered a strike. Two plays and a touchdown, and just like that, this is the hash marks. Kicking it to our left. There is no wind as a factor here. Kick is on the way. It is up. And it is good. A little tentatively. Here comes Alabama now. On the give. Far side. Cutting it up the field. And taking it in. Jace McClellan. Touchdown Alabama. Give a big thank you to Malik Benson. Who threw a wonderful box. But Jace McClellan gets the touchdown. And for the first time today. Bama is in the lead. Well, the ball, like Tennessee so many times, was intended to go off tackle, but because of the pressure and Tennessee caving down, Jace McClellan was able to bounce it to the edge. And as you mentioned, Malik Benson is this distance this year. He had that 51-yarder against Texas. Here's the kick. Plenty of leg. On the way. It is good. It is good. A 50-yard field goal by a man who continues to close in on the all-time NCAA scoring record. He's within shouting distance now as he takes Alabama to a 27 to 20 lead with 8-17 to go in the ball game. Alabama now watching as the quarterback Milton stands in. The ball is not free. It's picked up by Alabama and rumbling in for the touchdown is the Crimson Tide Jihad Campbell. We had just spoken about Coach, it was indeed a huge second half. Yeah, well, you know, we ran the ball a lot better. We flipped the script on them. You know, we gained over 100 yards rushing in the second half, and they only gained like about 30. Um, but we executed better, you know, as a team. We made some halftime adjustments. We played more four down in the second half, got better rush. And um, I think got into the rhythm of the game a little bit. But we got off the field on third down, and the defense did a great job of shutting them out in the second half. And the offense kept the ball away from them quite a bit, too, which was the plan going into the game. So we got it done in the second half. You did indeed. 34 to 20, the final score. Alabama a winner over the Tennessee Vols. Stay with us. we got a lot more coming up right here on the Nick Saban Show, presented by TruckWorks. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by... T-Mobile, bringing 5G to hometowns across the SEC and proud partner of Alabama football. Coke, with zero sugar and refreshingly delicious. Is Coca-Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself.
Coach, your turning point of the game was? Well, I think the way we came out and played in the second half. We hit a big run right off the bat, and then we hit a 50-yard pass for a touchdown. And I think um, the electricity that went through the stadium and went through our players you know, set the tone for the rest of the game. And I think that was probably the turning point in the game. Even though it wasn't a turning point on the scoreboard, it was a turning point from a momentum standpoint in the game. You've talked about it before. You don't lose many recruiting battles over the years. You lost Freddie Roach two or three times, but you finally got him, and he's back yeah, home. But I love him, man. He uh, does a great job with his players. He's a good recruiter. Uh, everybody has a tremendous amount of respect for him. But, you know, when he was in high school, I lost him. When I was at LSU, he went to Alabama. Then when I was at Miami Dolphins, I tried to sign him as a free agent. He went someplace else. Tried to hire him here two or three times all right, to be a coach. Sure. And he was always coaching someplace else. But we finally got him, and we're glad to have him. We are indeed. Let's spend some more time going Mercedes-Benz All Access with Freddie Roach. Let's go. Let's go. Kick it up. Touch your heel. Touch your heel. Get down. Get down. Get down. 50. Get down. Let's go. Let's go. Payne, what kind of day we going to have today? Great day. Huh? Great day. Hey, stiff arming, dog! Hit! Scoop it, George! Hit! Let's go, Payne! Let's go, Payne! Get out, Quinn! Get out, Kurt! Good! Hit! Now get it out! Tackle first, strip it last! Set! Hit! Go, good one. Ball out, good tackle, good one. Work to get the ball out, man. That's what you gotta look forward to when you get old. Hey, why'd you just get down like that to tie your shoe? Because I didn't want to put my knee on the turf. This is my problem. I did them heavy squats. I don't heavy squats, so you be heavy squats. Come on, my knees swell up like this. There you go, stay down, go through him. Don't bring your pads up. Good, Quinn. Pad level. Stay right, get down. Set. Get that hand up, Edric. Put your off hand on your thigh. Good, that's it, good pad level. Back up, Kurt, back up, Kurt, back up, right there. And strike out. That's it, right there, dog. Do it again. Good job, Kurt. Try to go through the wall. Good, eyes up, good one. That's it. Push through your front foot, James. Stagger your feet. Get it, Justin. Hey, Justin, come on. That was too nice. Come back. Better. Here we go. Let's go, Payne. Go get it, Payne. Hand the foot and go get it. There you go. Get them thumbs up. Get them hands inside. Stay down, good one. Good strike, dog. Let's go. Go set the edge, dog. Don't widen that gap. That's it, drive on him. Need some body lean, who's up? Good body lean, here we go. There you go, stay down, good rep. See, there you go right there, 92. See, you feel it? Just sink your butt and you're in good shape, dog. Here we go, under, you're in tight end, under. Hey, you're getting here. You gotta get him extended. Good pad level. Boom, there you go, 50! See, there you go, Hunter! Hurry up, man, you're gonna make me grow hair. No, your face, you're hitting with your face first. Boom, there you go. Here we go. There you go, stay right there. I got you. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. No. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> You're wrong as two left shoes. Coach, let's take a look at our play of the game brought to us by CBNS Bank. Right, well, um, I think, you know, it's a great pass rush by 41, but there's nothing special about that. But I think this is a little bit of a, a, a coverage, you know, kind of sack. Um, so, you know, they're in these domino stacks. So they've got two guys right behind each other. So you either play lock on this guy with this guy, and the back guy plays the back guy. And in this case, we're playing three over two. So he's got the point guy, 
these two guys are playing the back guy. All right, but you have to play off of them about eight yards because you can't get caught up in, in, in the wash. Now, sometimes I'll put this guy on the back guy and double that guy. All right, and then Caleb's over here doubling this guy to the field with Kool-Aid in and out. All right, so um, when they have the tight end in the backfield, they can do six-man, seven-man protection. All right, but Braz is going to come off the edge, beat the tackle here. But you're going to see the quarterback, you know, double clutch this ball. All right, because Malachi gets a great jump on this, this. Watch Malachi's jump on this. Nine does a great job of jamming the point, all right, which is what you want to do for the smoke passes and, and you know, the – the advantage throws they try to do. He knows he's got help, but he's got to play inside out because the guy's so wide. He gets a great jump. And you see this guy starts to throw the ball right there, and he gets a great jump on it, and he doesn't. And then we get to strip sack, 41, great pass rush. Uh, really does a great job. All right, we don't even, we don't, 92, we don't do a good job on this side, but and 30 scoops it up and scores because when you're playing this coverage, you know, 30 and 32 can sort of, their guys don't really come out. You know, they got the tight, they got the, the, the tight end and the back. So it's seven-man protection, so you got two rats on the quarterback, really. Um, but we lost contain on the quarterback a couple times in the game. That hurt us, but it doesn't hurt us here, man. This is a big play in the game. To get us up two scores in the game and made a big difference. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Coke with zero sugar and refreshingly delicious. Is Coca-Cola zero sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. Coach, it's great when you get an opportunity to talk about your players as you do in this segment each week and also great when it's a young man who's a senior such as Roy Dale Williams. You know, I love Roy Dale. Um, you know, he's an unselfish player. You know, this guy plays on special teams. Uh, you know, he fills in at running back. He'll do anything that you ask him to do for the team. Always has a smile on his face uh, and is very well liked by his teammates. I think he's going to be very successful someday. He's got great personality. Senior out of Hueytown. Coach, let's learn more about Roy Dell Williams. Roy Dell Williams, Hueytown, Alabama, running back. I came to Alabama to win, you know. Of course, playing on Coach Saban. Uh, to be one of the greats, you know, I want to come in and compete every day. The standard is set high, the expectations are high, the best of best, iron sharp as iron, you know. I looked up to uh, Josh Jacobs, you know, he was a running back here as well. Very dominant, very physical, tough, downhill runner, can make a guy miss. And that was just one of the play types that I wanted to be. Starting off, my dad asked me, he was like, uh, hey man, you thought about, you know, football? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm a basketball guy, but of course I was like, you know what, I could try football. Played Little League for Hewittown, Hewittown Little League down there in Brooklyn. Uh, and I played quarterback, and we used to do 18 boot, 17 boot, and I just run around the end. And that's how it all started. And then from now on, I played running back. I played a little defense. I quit playing basketball in 10th grade. Realized I wasn't going to get no taller than what I am. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I found out what I wanted to do, stuck with it, start grinding. I will play the one through the five. I will, I will bring it up, dish it. I'll go down there and grab some rebounds, throw me a oop. I'm dunking, you can throw whatever, you can do whatever. I'm gonna play it. <laughs> you wanna walk on the basketball team? Like Coach Oates? Hey, come on, Coach Oates. This year the standard set really high, man. Everybody walks in, ready to work, man. The youngest guy to the oldest guy, man. It's, the mindset is just through the roof. Everybody wants to get better. Everybody wants to compete, you know. And I see everybody on the training tables, everybody trying to get the body right, coming in every day to work, being that example, uh, being on time. That's one key thing. Being prepared, being dressed properly. All the little things, not complaining, not doing all the extra stuff. It's just coming ready to work, showing the young guys what the standard really is, you know. Come from Hilly Town, we're not really that big, but the community just, it's a great community. A lot of great people around. When I was younger, I looked up to Jameis, and with me being the shoes that I'm in, I know a lot of kids look up to me, so I'm just trying to set that standard there. Even though I'm here, I'm just still trying to set the standard there to be one of the greats. The way he has this program set up is just amazing, man. How we are in this facility, it helps me off the field, knowing what to do, when to be there, how to do it. Just the little things that really triggers me to, okay, this is the part where after football, this is what I'm gonna have to do the right way. Uh, really a guy that stays out the way, man. I'm, I go out every now and then, but really it's, Facility here, train the table home. If not that, go out with the family, 
You may see me at the bowling alley. If you do, if you want to compete, we can bowl. The <laughs> Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Ford. The Ford F-150 helps make your game day traditions bigger and better season after season. Coach, what's next? Thankfully, finally a break for your team before you start that back stretch, which will begin with LSU. Yeah, well, this is really important for us, I think. I think, you know, we, we, we do the catapult numbers on our players to know what their explosive speed is and power and all that. And, you know, this eight weeks has worn probably a dozen of our players down, mostly skill guys who do a lot of running in practice. So this gives us an opportunity to, you know, look at these next four games and get ready. Uh, during this bye week, but it also gives us an opportunity to heal up some guys and rest some guys that, you know, are um, getting a little wore out. So um, eight weeks in this league is tough, uh, but I think this is a really welcome time for us. But we can also take all the things that have been issues and problems and work on those things this week in practice to try to make some improvement in terms of how we execute. Always appreciate the time. Congratulations again on the victory. Smoke them if you got them. And we'll see you next time here on the Nick Saban Show. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Coke with zero sugar and refreshingly delicious. Is Coca-Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. And by Trustmark, people you trust, advice that works.